was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we're going to be looking at the top five battle cards in the Transformers trading card game. We've already looked at the five best characters, the five worst characters, links to both of those and all of my videos in the description of this video. So today, it's time to look at action cards. And I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, the more I looked into this, the more research I did, the more planning I did for this video, the more it occurred to me that there are a lot of really good action cards. Now, before we start off here, there were a few that I decided were just never going to make the list. So Dino Chomp is a phenomenal card that lets you scrap your hand and then you get Bold 5. Bold 5 is nuts. Supercharge is the best you can do otherwise and that gives you Bold 3. Bold 5 is over the top good. And then of course... The zero cards in hand isn't a big deal because you've got Dinobot Snarl in alt mode that lets you draw two cards if you've got an empty hand. And then, of course, you've got Grimlock in alt mode that gives one of your Dinobots bold free. Then you add in Dino Chomp and you get bold eight. It's over the top. However, it's only for Dinobot decks. So it was never going to make the top five out of everything. Similarly, Swarm is phenomenal in Insecticon decks. You get to flip a battle card for each Insecticon with which you began the game. For each orange icon you flip, your opponent chooses one of their characters to take a damage counter. For each blue icon you flip, you repair damage from one of your characters. It's wonderful in Insecticon decks. It was never going to make it. Now, a huge shout out to everybody over on the Facebook group. I put another poll up. A whole bunch of really lovely people did go and answer, and I thank you very, very much for doing so. I'm not just blindly following the list, although my top five is the same as the top five, although it, it's slightly misordered. I've played around with the order a little bit. But huge shout out to all you lovely ladies and gentlemen. I will, of course, show you the poll at the end. So a couple that didn't make it nice and quickly then. Equipment Enthusiast lets you draw a card for each upgrade you've got. And it's got a white icon. That is awesome, but not good enough to make the list. Plasma Burst does two damage to an enemy. That's very good for getting cheeky damage on the field. Although the lack of an icon does really hurt it here. Treasure Hunt is a nice little card. It lets you scrap the top four cards of your deck. Put all upgrade scrap this way into your hand. Good for rolling through your deck. Good that it's got an orange icon. Good that it lets you search out upgrades. And I've made no secret of the fact that ones like Force Field excite me very much indeed. It will make your decks more consistent. But it wasn't quite good enough to get on the list. Peace Through Tyranny came pretty close. It's got double orange icon, which is awesome. It lets you KO a character that has six stars or more. But again, you would only do that if they were about to be KO'd anyway. And then take an extra turn. Double orange icons and it can swing a game. That one came very, very close to making the list here. Ready for action is a very, very nice card indeed. It allows you to untap a character with 10 stars or fewer. It's really good as an effect. Let's you untap a character, keep your turns rolling a little bit more fluidly, etc. But there's no icon on it. It doesn't work for some of the best characters in the game. Things like Nemesis Prime or the rare Optimus Prime are a little bit too expensive here. So for that reason, I, I didn't feel like it could go on the list. I just, I just didn't think it was quite good enough here, which makes me a little bit sad. And similarly, Leap Into Battle came very, very close to getting on the list. Gives one of your characters plus free attack until the end of the turn. That is crazy high for getting extra attack. It's got a blue icon, which you often see this in the game. If it helps you attack and it has a blue icon. If it helps you defending, it has an orange icon. Just to make those deck building choices a little bit more awkward. The card that actually came closest to making the list that didn't was Supercharge. I adore Supercharge. The orange icon is great and it gives you bold free. But again, you're going to be playing it in a deck that wants bold and it gives you an orange icon. So that's going to help you attack. I think it's a wonderful card. But in the end, the fact that it didn't help cards that much that weren't going for bold meant that I had to leave it off the list. Although if you want, let's put it in at number six. 
In at number five, I Still Function. I love I Still Function. I Still Function doesn't actually have an icon, which I know, weird, right? You get to return one of your KO'd characters that has 12 stars or fewer to the battlefield and repair one damage from it. And then at the end of the turn, you get to KO it. Now, well, you have to KO it. In terms of the 12 stars or fewer, there's only actually two characters that have 13 stars. The aforementioned Optimus Prime Battlefield Legend and Megatron Living Weapon, they are 13 star cards. As it happens at the moment, and I'm sure this will change in the future, as in like 100% sure, but as it stands, they're the only two that can't be got. Now, there are some super crazy good combos here, like Dinobot Sludge, for instance. Dinobot Sludge has an ability where you can move any damage counters you like from your other Dinobots to this one. So, you can use I Still Function to completely heal all of your other Dinobots, bring Sludge back, move it all over, and KO it. It's over-the-top crazy good. But even if you're not using it for Dinobot Sludge, this is a card that can just give you one more turn of any crazy ability that you like. Or bring back a character for one more turn just to get one more attack off to win the game. It's the kind of card that if played right wins the game and can be played in any deck. So even though it doesn't have an icon, I still feel alright putting it in at number 5. In at number four, we've got Rollout. There's a lot to like about Rollout. Firstly, it has both an orange and a blue icon, meaning you can put it into a deck that wants to attack or a deck that wants to defend. And secondly, it lets you flip each of your characters from bot mode to alt mode. What if they're already in alt mode? Then you don't flick them from bot mode to alt mode. Clearly, if they're not in bot mode, you can't flip them with this card. So just make sure they're all in bot mode and then play this. The thing is, we have got some absolutely ludicrous when you flip to alt mode skills. And to be honest, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time you get a skill activated when you flip into alt mode. Autobot Mirage, when you flip to this mode, you may play an action card. That sounds pretty good. Barrage. When you flip to this mode, one of your characters gets pierced to until the end of your turn. The aforementioned Grimlock. When you flip to this mode, one of your Dinobots gets bold free until the end of your turn. Megatron Living Weapon. When you flip to this mode, return a weapon from your scrap pile to your hand. Nemesis Prime Dark Clone. When you flip to this mode, your opponent chooses one of their characters and does two damage to it. I could keep going, but I'm hoping you get the point at this stage. It is a card that can get two, three, four of these effects off at once. Plus, it's got an orange and a blue icon. So putting it at number four was not a terribly difficult decision. In at number three, and this is where I really differ from the poll that went up on Facebook that I put up there and you lovely ladies and gentlemen answered, some of you at least I hope, I'm putting Brainstorm at number three, and this was the runaway number one winner in the poll. Now Brainstorm has a blue icon, and to be fair that brings it down a little bit because the majority of decks at the moment are attacking not defending, and the fact that the average attack is four and the average defense is two... It's kind of the point, I suppose. But Brainstorm is clearly a phenomenal card, and please don't misunderstand me. I am not trying to argue Brainstorm is not a phenomenal card. Brainstorm lets you play two actions. You play Brainstorm, you play an action, then you play another action. You play Brainstorm, and then you play two actions. And we're literally doing a list of top five actions here, although I did shout out a bunch at the beginning of the video. So you've been seeing how good some of these actions are and how good playing two of them could be. So why is Brainstorm number three rather than number one? Very simple. Depends what else is in your hand. You're going to see that the cards I put at number one and two are basically always good. You draw them, yay, it's great. Let's say for argument's sake, you play Dino Chomp. So that you can have plus five bold to one of your Dino Bots. That's great. Oh no, I've got two cards in hand. Let me use Dino Bot Snarl. I draw two cards. Well, if one of them is Brainstorm... Best case scenario, I have one other action in hand. So I'm not getting the full benefit of Brainstorm. But if that other card happens to be an upgrade, then I can't play Brainstorm. 
Now, I know that I've just used Dino Chomp, etc., but my point is, I'm sitting there with a hand where Brainstorm's not particularly good. And this will happen. And that's why it's number three. It's a phenomenal card. There are going to be turns where you play Brainstorm, Use Equipment Enthusiast to draw a bunch of cards, you draw a force field that you really want to go and play, and then you draw, I don't know, a supercharge and get bold free. And it will be wonderful. But there's too many turns where Brainstorm won't work well because you don't have two actions you want to play in your hand. In at number two, Incoming Transmission. And I should warn you, numbers one and two are exceedingly close on my list here. Incoming Transmission has an orange icon, which like we've said, is a lot of the time the one we're going to want. You get to draw two cards and then put a card from your hand on top of your deck. But you see, the way this game works, when you're attacking, you flip two battle cards and count the orange icons to add to your attack. When you're defending, you flip two battle cards and add the blue icons to your defense. Or maybe you hit a white icon which lets you flip two more cards. Or maybe you're playing something like Autobot Jazz, for instance, whereby you get a huge boost, but only if you flip two white icons, etc. Well, Incoming Transmission lets you place a card from your hand on top of your deck after drawing two cards. So if you're attacking pop down a card of an orange icon. Maybe you've even got a piece through tyranny in hand and you can actually put two orange icons on the top. If you're defending, put a blue icon on top, etc. It lets you make sure that one of the battle cards you flip while attacking or defending has the icon that you want. And if you don't have that icon in hand, you draw two cards first anyway. That's why I love incoming transmission. That's why it's such a wonderful card. But it's not number one. And I'm sure you've probably guessed what number one is right now. It's Rapid Conversion. I think Rapid Conversion is over the top great. And there's basically two cards that I put into every deck I make as a free of at the moment. One of them is Force Field and one of them is Rapid Conversion. Firstly, it's got a white icon. White icons are great. They let you run through your deck faster. So something like Nemesis Prime, for instance, which when you shuffle your scrap pile into your deck, i.e. when you run out of deck, you get to put a card from the bottom of your scrap pile under him, and then you get plus three attack. That's going to absolutely love this. There's a bunch of cards like the aforementioned Autobot Jazz or the Bumblebee, the Scout Bumblebee, the Courageous Scout Bumblebee, that gets to flip two extra cards when you attack or defend and flip at least two white icons. White icons are great, ladies and gentlemen. And it has a white icon, which makes me want to put it above some of the other cards on this list. But secondly, you get to flip a character to its other mode. We saw how awesome Rollout was. But the thing with Rollout is you've got to really time it so that you're flipping all of your characters from bot to alt. So it's a wonderful card, but it's awkward to use. Rapid conversion, you just flip. Maybe you flip Nemesis Prime into bot mode, and you put two damage on one of your opponent's characters. But really, you want to go back into bot mode, so you've got the attack of seven. And so that you've got the Redonk skill. That's where rapid conversion comes in. Maybe you've used Dinobot Snarl to give yourself an extra two cards, but then you want to flip back into bot mode here because then you've got an extra attack. And there's just a million different examples of when you're in one mode and then you want to go to the other. That's where rapid conversion comes in. That's why it's number one. Here's the poll as a whole, and you can see that the top five I agree with, but I've basically inverted the top three. If you want to argue with me, ladies and gentlemen, that's where the comment section goes. Go nuts, but please do remember the rule, ladies and gentlemen. Be nice, and make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me over on Twitter at the Wossy for some rambling. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays.